A young woman is found murdered inside of her apartment, and 47 years later, they are still wondering, who is the Christmas Ribbon Killer? Hello, true crimers. This is the case of Linda McDaniel. Viewer discretion is advised. It was the Christmas season of 1977 in Indianapolis, Indiana. The weather was cold, the houses were decorated, and kids were excited for Santa to come in just a few weeks. But sadly for one particular group of kids, their Christmas would be rocked by a tragedy. Their beloved teacher, Linda McDaniel, was found dead inside of her apartment. 23-year-old Linda McDaniel had only been teaching in elementary school for just a year. She taught at Maplewood Elementary, which was located in Wayne Township there in Indiana. Linda taught the first grade, and she was so loved by her students. She was such a great teacher, even for this being something brand new for her. It was her passion. This is what she wanted to do. She loved kids. Her dream was to one day have her own children, to have a husband, and to spend the rest of her career teaching children. But unfortunately, none of that got to happen for Linda. It was a Monday morning, December 1st, 1977. Linda had failed to show up for work, and this was completely out of character for her. She never missed work, and if, even if she did, she would let the school know. Regardless, she never, ever missed work. She loved going to work. So the school principal would end up calling the apartment complex, but they weren't very helpful at the time. So the school principal knew Linda's aunt, who had also worked in education. And so the principal asked the aunt, hey, we haven't heard from Linda. This is kind of unusual. We're concerned. Can you go check on her? So her aunt, Mary McClelland, would go to the apartment complex, knock on her door, but she was getting no response. And so she asked the people at the apartments to please help her get access to the apartment. And they did. They unlocked the apartment for her. They're searching through the apartment and everything seems relatively normal. There doesn't appear to be any outward signs of any kind of crime happening or anything being stolen or missing. No sign of a struggle. But then they get to the bathroom and the bathroom door is locked. And so at this point, they have to force the bathroom door open. And when they do, they find something horrific. Linda McDaniel was nude except for her underwear. She was wearing underwear and that was it. She had been in a kneeling position. She, her head was submerged in a few inches of water in the bathtub and her hands were tied behind her back with a red satin Christmas ribbon. On her dining room table, there were gifts on there and she, there was wrapping paper and that red ribbon. And it appeared that Linda was literally in the process of wrapping these little Christmas presents for her students. But it was clear to them that she was in the middle of wrapping gifts and someone came into her apartment and did this to her. There was no forced entry, so she must have, they think, let her assailant in. But then something happened where she ends up with her hands tied behind her back with some of that Christmas ribbon. The killer also shoved a, a towel down her throat and then submerged her head in eight inches of water. But because of the Christmas ribbon being tied behind her back, they, the media would nickname this the Christmas ribbon killer. The autopsy would show that she was actually asphyxiated and she did not drown. So when her head was put in the water, she was likely already dead. And they also, I think, found out or somehow knew that her hands were also tied behind her back after she was dead. But who did this? Why? What was the reason? Police are still unsure about that. Linda Sue McDaniel was born on February 9th, 1954. And I know she had at least one sibling. She had a sister who would also become an educator. She also taught elementary school. Working in the school system was something that ran in the family. Like I said earlier, her aunt worked at a school, her sister, then she did. And I think their mother also at one point worked at a school. As Linda grew up, she got good grades in school herself. She graduated with honors. She was part of the high school band. She then went to Indiana State University, Purdue, where she got her education degree, 
with her with the goal in mind to become an elementary school teacher. That was what she wanted to do. She was working at the Sears Automotive, I guess, center for about a year or so. And then she was doing like substitute teacher stuff around that same time before she finally got her own teaching job at the elementary school, which she had only been doing for about a year before this happened. And like I said earlier, Linda had a lot of goals. She wanted to find a husband. She wanted to have children of her own. She wanted to have this, you know, nice wonderful little family to grow up with in Indianapolis. And it's just sad that that never got to happen for her. She never married. She did have a couple of boyfriends on again, off again. Her sister would say that she was kind of like a magnet for lost souls type of people. That Linda would open her door, open her home to basically anyone who was in need and someone who may be in turmoil or was struggling with something. And it could be that's what happened here, that she let someone in her apartment that she likely knew and trusted, and then he did this to her. They did look into her ex-boyfriends, her past boyfriends. They checked their alibis. They looked into anything they could find on them, and eventually they were able to clear all of her ex-boyfriends from doing this. What police believe is that Linda likely was killed on the night of November 30th. Linda that night had called a friend, and that friend would later tell police that Linda said she was expecting a, a man she had recently dated to be coming over to her apartment. Unfortunately, Linda did not name this particular person. They don't know who this man was. But apparently this man, according to Linda, had tried to assault her on a date they had recently gone on. And what's believed is that this man called Linda that night and said, hey, can I come over to apologize? And likely he did come over that night. The friend told Linda, don't let him into your apartment. If he assaulted you, don't let him in. But Linda told the friend, don't worry, everything will be fine. You know, I can handle this. And then Linda was never seen or heard from ever again. Now, like I said, they were able to clear her known ex-boyfriends. However, this particular man that she had recently gone on a date with that allegedly assaulted her, they never knew his name. They don't know who he is or who he was. They also looked into, I guess, a man that Linda worked with at the school as a possible suspect. Now, this particular man, unfortunately, has passed away in the time being, but he does have kids. And so they're hoping that maybe one day they could rule him out or say he's the one based on, you know, DNA from his kids. But the problem is, is... In the initial investigation, they didn't find any DNA. This is in 1977, so this was obviously not really a thing back then. But they did collect a lot of evidence, and they have a lot of things that they plan to, over the years, test and retest to see if they can swab things like the ribbon or Linda's clothing or anything in the bathroom, anything and everything they can think of to maybe try to pull DNA from and build a profile. And if they can, they can take the DNA from that particular unknown man's kids and see if there was a match there, or they can rule him out. It doesn't sound like they found any fingerprints or anything like that, and there were no witnesses who saw a man go into her apartment. No one, I guess, heard anything at all. No one saw or heard anything. And so they had very, very little to go on from the get-go. But then as the years and the decades go on, still having no information with little evidence there they have that feeling of we're, we're losing hope here of like are we going to be able to solve this this is 47 years later now in 2024 when i'm filming this the killer could very much still be alive could be in their 50s or 60s and it's very possible they're still out there somewhere the fbi over the years did develop a profile on who this particular killer may be and that profile is this. A white male who was 35 to 40 years old at the time of the case. They were either socially or occupationally connected to Linda. So meaning that, she, that he was in her group of friends or he worked with her. They believe that he was married with kids at the time this case occurred, but was having some kind of marital discourse at the time. The profile states that after the crime happened, he and his wife, this killer and his wife, probably went into counseling, but their marriage likely ended. They believe he may possibly be a military veteran. Prior to the crime, was likely experiencing some kind of marital 
and economical crisis, someone who does not or did not participate much in family activities, likely spent a lot of time in bars. The profile also states that after the crime, this person's consumption of alcohol likely began to lessen or dip after the crime. They do believe that this man had been in her apartment before and that they probably had no criminal history prior to this, except for maybe some traffic tickets, but that would be it. And so that's the profile. So obviously this person would be, actually, I guess if they thought they were 35 to 40, they would actually probably be in their 80s at this point. But again, still could be alive. Or maybe they're not, but maybe that profile is jogging some memories to you. Like, oh my God, that's my dad or my grandpa or that's my older brother or someone I used to work with back in the day or wh whatever the case may be. You might recognize that type of person from the area of Indianapolis, Indiana from 1977. And so the police there are asking for the public's help. They need to know if you know anything about this murder. If they, if you, if you recognize that profile or maybe the killer talked to you or talked to someone and that someone talked to you, and then maybe over the years you've been afraid to come forward because that person might retaliate or you were still in a friend group with them and whatever the case may be. But maybe now you're not. And maybe that person is dead and, and you could be a lot safer now coming forward to say what you know. So if you have any information about the murder of Linda McDaniel and the identity of the Christmas ribbon killer, please contact the police at 317 327 one, two, seven, zero. Any information at all. It could be the tiniest little detail that might break this case open. And again, if you need to, you can report your information anonymously. You don't have to say who you are. Just have to say what you know. So please, if you know anything, please help Linda McDaniel get the justice that she very rightfully deserves. But... That is it for this case. True crime, a Rooney Dooney Dingleberry Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, please subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. The more likes it gets, the more people will see it. The more people that see it, you might get that one person who knows something. It doesn't have to be my video. It can be anyone's video about this case as long as it gets solved. That's all that matters. I also have uh, two different TikTok pages where I post short form true crime stories. And if you want to follow those, the links to those are in the link tree in the description of this video below. The links also pop up here at one point in the beginning and then also at the end of the video. Uh, in that link tree, you will also find my merch store. We have like t-shirts and hoodies and stuff, nothing super fancy, but we do ship all over the world. So feel free to check it out if you want. And then lastly, uh, if there's a case you want me to cover, just send me a really quick email. My email is also listed below. Just send me the name of the case and where it happened, when it happened. I'll add it to the list. The list is over 6,300 names long. I pick each case I cover each time at random, so I cannot promise you when I'll cover your case that you recommend, but I will get to it eventually. Okay? Okay. Kapish, kapish, kaposh, kapoosh. The fuck? I don't know. Anyway, that is it for this video. So until the next case, true crime Arunis, a ta ta for now. Yeah, see? No, see? Bye, see? Hi, sees. Hi, see, slushy? What?